So it's the start of season 11 of the Lincoln Loco. We've got Champions League football this season. We've moved to a new stadium again, technically speaking. I mean, we have. There's no technically about it. We have. I'll explain that. And we've spent £150 million on players this summer. So there's a lot to talk about. Let's get on with it. Hello, I hope you've all had a good Easter, or it's, it's Easter Monday actually, isn't it? So I suppose you're still having a good Easter. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, then I hope you had a good Monday. Welcome back to the Lincoln Loco Season 11 now, 11 scenes with Lincoln. We're doing pretty well for ourselves. We've got Champions League football this season, which is very, very interesting. There's been a few transfers over summer. Uh, I say a few. There's 150 million we spent over summer, so there's, there's you know money has been thrown around and spent. First of all, though, I will bring your attention to why we're moving stadium again, um, and it's it's a simple one really. Partway through last season, the board agreed to expand the stadium by about 3,000 or so, uh, which was fine. That was meant to be done over summer, and we've been done for this season. However, at the end of the season, as we got Champions League, they decided to expand it by 12, 13,000 or so. Uh, we're going to have a 40,000 seat stadium next year, basically. So while that's happening, we've had to move to Sheffield, uh, to Hillsborough and Sheffield, the home of Sheffield Wednesday, which I feel like is quite far to go. Although I think it's only about an hour on the train. I don't know what it is by road. Um, but I, you know, I would have thought Nottingham's a little bit closer. That's more like 40 minutes, 45 minutes from Lincoln driving, which is fine. But no, we've gone to go to Sheffield. So we're sharing with Sheffield Wednesday this season. Uh, 39,000 seats. I don't know how it's going to affect things. Um, but as you can see here, we're moving back into a nearly 40... Th oh no, it's going to be 36. I've always read that's 39. So, well... Okay, we're moving to a 36,000 or 37,000 basically um, stadium next season when it's all done. Uh, the Grant Brown Park will be expanded by 12,000 seats. So that'd be pretty cool. I should also mention as well, this has the potential to be the last season of the Lincoln Loco. Now, the very, very first episode, I'm sure I said something along the lines of, we're with Lincoln from League 2 to the Champions League or something like that, and we're in the Champions League now, so I feel like, I feel like once we're in the Champions League, that's the most we can probably do. We'd have to do the World Club, actually, I suppose, the next season, the World Club Cup, or whatever it's called. Um, but I'd also like to win the Premier League as well, so once we've won the Premier League and the Champions League, maybe the World Club Cup as well, there's potential for it to end so I feel like it's it's coming towards the end now of Lincoln Local we'll move on to something else afterwards so um, so yeah but I just thought I'd let you know that it's potentially coming to the end of days right transfers is what you want to hear about um, yeah we, we spent 150 million on transfers you're going to think wow that's probably quite a few players no uh, it, it was spent on three players so um, there we go two of them are free actually I've got to say three of them we've paid it <laughs> a lot of money for. Um, a lot of players did leave. We'll go through the outs first. Uh, the biggest name to leave was Despacito to PSG, £38 million. He was valued about 44 um, but in order to bring someone in, we had to really, I suppose, let him go to sort of release funds for it and things like that. And he wasn't going to play and he'd get angry and things like that. So Despacito's gone uh, for slightly less than market value at the time, but £38 million is still quite a lot of money to get for him. So PSG have got him. Uh, Gianluca Pandolfi has moved to Seville for £20 million. He was getting cross in the all last season. Eventually went on loan and we did fine without him. So he's gone to Seville for £20 million, pounds, um, which is about right, I think, for his price. Nina Pajovic is a player that you probably won't know. Um, it's because we bought him by accident a few seasons ago. You might remember me telling you about it. Uh, but we bought him by accident from Partizan for 3.3 because we wanted a new winger. He was going to be a good one. And then it turned out he didn't have a work permit. I meant to press cancel, but pressed accept instead. So we bought him back. He's been on loan the past few seasons, actually. Uh, earned us 5.5 million from loans, and now we've sold him for 8.25 million, rising to 10.25 million in the future. Uh, Carlos Alvelos has also gone. We brought him in two seasons ago as an attack midfielder, but he got injured for a long time. Was never the same after that, so we thought we'd get rid of him, especially we've got Diaz and Shalom. So he's gone 7.5 to 10.5 in the future. And then Masovic has gone as well to Bayern Munich, 18 million rising to 21.5 million and hammer time really got in a huff about this he was not he's not happy about most transfers i'm being honest with you he's a bit of an annoying prick in in transfer season uh he got angry about masovic last season he was angry about angel gomez and liam coyle leaving the club and then the season before that uh was he angry but he was angry about Fundo vieira leaving because it would have weakened our striking option so he gets cross about a lot of transfers but we calm him down by saying it's for the financial reason he's, he's fine with that every single time right 
on to the ins. And the first one, we'll get you to the free transfers first. Corey Kennedy, I have no idea who he is. I have no idea why he's here. I don't remember signing him. He just came in one day. So either I tried to sign him ages ago and he was too young to come because he's only just turned 18. Or there's some other weird reason. But I don't remember signing him. I don't know what he's doing here. But he's here, so he's, he won't play. There you go. Wilfred Thomas is the other free transfer, and he's a pretty decent one, to be fair. Didn't want to stay at Nancy uh, for another season, so decided to leave them. And he's come to us on a free transfer as a future striker. This could be the end for Jesus Jimenez now. He's a player that has been pretty decent for us, but he's this guy, 19 year old, is already as good as him. He's not a target man, which is the issue. He's an advanced forward like Mark Call and Hammer Time are, which is a bit of an issue as well, but... I wasn't going to turn this guy down on a free transfer with five-star potential. So he's at the club. He'll be back up this season. We may send him on loan if he doesn't get in the first-team football. But he'll be a decent signing, I think. And hopefully for the future, we'll bag loads of goals for us. Right then, let's talk about these in-transfers now. This first man, Leon Botcher from Wolfsburg for 42.5 million is the reason Despacito had to go because he's a right-sided winger. He has just turned 20 years old, four-star current ability, five-star potential, insane physical stats, really, really good technicals and some really nice mentals, especially about 20 determination and driven personality. Despacito is only a three-star winger, so we've, we've increased it by a whole star plus potential for more and things like that so he's going to be a decent player this season for us he's had two good full seasons at Wolfsburg uh, plenty of goals and assists and some good average ratings so I think he's ready to make that step up now to the Premier League which is good 14 caps for Germany already at 20 years old which is pretty nice um, he's not been here long but he's already crossed with me because Morella wanted to leave to go to Man City um, let me go here and I said no you can't go and now Morella and this guy's crossed with me for some reason he just seems to like Morella so they're both crossing me those two the wingers which is a slight issue but we'll brush over that so this guy could be a troublemaker but uh, he just has some nice stats so it's, it's it's weighing things up isn't it Giuseppe Sesa is the next player to come in and he is a goalkeeper, a much needed goalkeeper, four star current ability, four star potential, 26 year old Swiss, comes in from Dortmund where he's done very, very well, as you can see here. In the seasons that he's played, he's never conceded more than games played, which is a, a good sign because Barry Scherzer and, and Nicky Reynolds don't do that. Now, he's on a lot of money and we've spent a lot of money on him. He's on £110,000 a week. We signed him for £42 million, which you think is probably quite a lot. Uh, he was one of three keepers that one wanted to come to us. And two were better than what we've already got. So, yeah. They, I mean, it's not really that hard, is it? Basically, though, uh, we spent a lot of money on him, though, because he's one of the best keepers in the world. We're at this level now where four-star, there aren't many four-star players around. And when Barry Scherzer is, uh, if you look at these reports, Barry Scherzer's three-star. There aren't many players that, to be fair, are much better than him anyway. But if we want to get to that next level, we have to get someone better, and obviously, and this guy should be able to do it for us. We had two of the guys that were cheaper on um, terms of transfer and cheaper in terms of wages, which we did think about going. Also younger with more potential as well. Um, one of them was much younger and had a lot more potential, apparently. However, we need something now. We don't need something in two, three seasons time in terms of potential, um, especially when it comes to the goalkeeper situation. So basically, Giuseppe Sater comes in as the expensive option, but the best option for right now if we want to try and win the Premier League this season or the Champions League this season. It took a lot to me to actually sign him because I was, I was trying to weigh things up financially. I'm thinking it's not right. We can't spend this much money on a goalkeeper and this much per week on a goalkeeper. But eventually we did, um, which was an issue actually in the end because then it just, you know, I use that logic on this guy, which is why we spent £65 million on a left back. Um, yeah, £65 million on a left back. Some will say it's a waste, um, and I'd probably agree with you, especially the £175,000 a week. He's the highest earner at the club. However, however, he is going to be phenomenal. He is like literally the only left back in the world who wants to come to us who is decent enough to be like a, a Champions League player. And he's got Champions League experience, most notably at Inter Milan, who, if we look at their schedule from last season, are Champions League winners. So the guy we signed was an integral part of a Champions League winning side last season, which I think is incredible. So if we can replicate his performances this season, then maybe we can win the Champions League. I don't know. Four-star current ability, four-and-a-half star potential. If he gets that, that's fantastic. He's going to be starting all season. Um, but Cholk is very cross that he came in, understandably so. But 
I mean, to be fair, he's 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 won a Champions League last season, so he's he's got to start. So it may have taken me a little while to get through all that, and I've had to explain things a little bit, try and justify these uh, these transfer fees, basically. But that are the transfers that we have done, and I think we leave ourselves in a much stronger position than last season. Um, the ball wants to qualify for the Euro Cup. That's like their minimum expectation. Um, if we look at the season preview, we currently are predicted to come fifth this season, but 61 to win the league, it's we could finish anywhere up there basically that's what the odds are saying so i reckon champions league again qualification automatically is the minimum for us this season the minimum now a couple of you were asking to look at um player stats last season and things like that so what we're going to do is we're going to just scroll down the team if you see a player that you like you can pause on them look at their stats see what's interesting you can also see like you can see the difference here in terms of barishers and the new guy sesa that we brought in I mean, he's so much better in every single aspect compared to, to Barry Scherzer. There's Benteke. There's the new guy, Botcher, for example. So I just thought I'd scroll down these. I mean, Machulk is unlucky, really. He's got a lot of potential. He's quite a good left back. But the other guy brought in, he's he's so much better. So he's got the start. He's, he's heads and tails better than uh, Machulk is, for example, and things like that. So we'll just scroll down. We'll have a look and see some of these players. There's Diaz. What a player Diaz is. I do love him to bits, to be fair. There's Mark Cole, still progressing quite nicely. Uh, there's Hammer Time, of course. Everyone loves Hammer Time, wants to talk about him. Um, his technicals are good where it matters. He actually, like other technicals, aren't actually that good. His technique's rubbish, for example, really, when you think about it. So he's just he's just lucky that he's good where he needs to be good, essentially. Um, that's, that's the main thing I've got to say. Uh, there's Kaufman. Andy Lewis is a player. You don't need to talk about him. He's on loan at Brentford. There's Lacassic, of course. You can see how he's developed, underwhelmingly so. Um, he's a Premier League player, apparently, with this two and a half star current ability, but he's underwhelmingly, really. There's Jordy Mertens, apparently getting worse. We'll have to have a word with him at some point. Uh, there's Morala, of course. Um, if you want to compare him to Botcher, this guy's a little bit better, Morala is. Although he's crossed, so he might leave soon because Man City put in like an £80 million bid. No, it, was, it was 60, I think, actually, that they put in. And uh, we said. We said no to it. And there's Giuseppe again. So, yeah. And also before that was Nicky Reynolds. He's now known at Everton because he's the third best goalkeeper here. But still got four-star potential. So, I want to get in Premier League football. So, he's on loan at Everton. Apparently made two. Oh, they're in the championship. Oh, I didn't realise that. I, th I feel like I've wasted it now. He needs to be in the Premier League. Right. We've finally got through all that. Let's get to today's game against Southampton. The first one of the Premier League season. Sesa starts in goal. Uh, Duiti is, I think I say his new name. Um, I didn't even say, say his name, did I? I need, Emil, Emil Duiti. Um, we'll, we'll just call him Dewey for now. Dewey, Benteke, Kaufman and Gomez as that back line. Jalapeno and Mertens keep in that midfield. Uh, Morales, Shalon and Botcher start in that attacking midfield. But Hall starts up front because our man Hammer Times picked up an injury. So there we go. There's a team. Southampton come up today. And if we want to be thinking about title this season, this has to be a win. Oh, we have to give him a number because he's only just joined the club. So we'll give him number three. I saved it. I made Masovic... Um, well, whoever was number three before, I can't remember it was. It probably was Masovic, but I made him give it up either way in the squad number list um, so he could have number three because I was planning on bringing him in. So uh, there we go. He's got the number three. He's, he's our starting man. Right, kick off for the brand new season. Southampton kicked the game off. We're playing away today, um, interestingly enough, I suppose. Um, Southampton were decent last season. They did pretty well. I know they're in continental competition this year. So either they came sick because I know Man City came fifth or they won a cup competition. I think it was because they came sixth in the end. So um, that's good for them. They're going to be trying to compete in the Europa League this season. Um, unlike us, we couldn't, um, which was a bit annoying. I know, in fact, actually, I think Southampton might have won it. Yeah, Southampton last season ended up winning the Europa League. I knew they were in a European competition. Uh, and it was really annoying because we know we can beat Southampton and Dortmund. So it was frustrating that we lost to them. Man City lost them in the next round to Tottenham. Um, after we got knocked out. So it was annoying that. And then Sesa makes a decent save. Barry Scherzer probably wouldn't have made that save. So already good good transfers. Highlights few and far between this episode so far. But it looks like we've got a chance now as Morala gets on the end of a cross from Boccia. And the two wingers combining to score. The two wingers that are really crossing me at the moment. They're combining though to score for me. So they are making me happy. Uh, which is which is good. But we scored then. We're 1-0 up against uh, Southampton. Bournemouth currently top of the league, which is interesting. Uh, Man United are, pl are playing. And um, in fact, I think they've already played today. I think they drew. Um, yeah, they're not there. So they, they already Man United slipping up, which is good for us because they're always up at the top of the table. It's annoying. I mean, not, not a bad first half, I've got to say. We're 1-0 up. I'd prefer to be a little bit further ahead, if I'm honest with you. But 
you know, we, we can't complain too much. We're doing pretty well so far. It's the first game of the new season, so we can expect it to be a little bit shaky. We had a decent pre-season. Uh, we only lost one game, that's the Barcelona. And of course, I didn't manage any of the pre-season. I gave it to my assistant manager to do. So it's his fault, really, isn't it? As Anthony Martial scored a decent goal from a corner. Oh, absolutely unmarked. Um, I don't know what we're paying all our defenders to do because we're starting to pay them a lot of money now, which is annoys me because I don't like paying players a lot of money but they've gone and scored that's the clean sheet gone already say sir we spent 40 million on you 42 million and you've, you can't keep a clean sheet so already that's not good I mean I am I am less than impressed so far this season Hall and Shalon I've not seen them do anything at all so Thomas is going to come on our new striker um, and then Diaz is going to come on as well actually they've not played much in pre-season by the look of things <laughs> I feel like my assistant just uses the same team every time, which is not good. Usually I use my assistant because he likes to rotate things a lot, but clearly for whatever reason, he's not done that. Um, so we have to have words with him. Also, Merton's apparently made lots of mistakes today, so um, we'll take him off as well, shall we? Oh, we're doing a quick sub now. Merton's come off. We're going to bring on Crazy Eyes because he is terrifying. I mean, it's a bit frustrating that we spent all this money and now we're sort of struggling to a one-all draw with Southampton. Uh, we're going to go to overload for these final 15, 10 minutes of the game or so. Um, apparently in the 12th minute we could have gone more direct passing, but I didn't decide to do it. So uh, nothing more there on that regard. We're going to shout push forward as well. I expect more goals. I'm expecting Wilfred Thomas to be scoring a few goals. I'm expecting Mark. Mark Call once again is named to be favourite for top goal scorer, despite not being top goal scorer ever. Uh, in, in anything basically but you know the Premier League pundits seem to have faith in him he's not going to play that many games of course it's going to be hammer time all the way but it's nice to know that they have faith in him well there's 10 seconds left in this game now which uh, to me suggests it's going to be one all there's going to be no more goals in this which is disappointing really I really really expect us to go and win this game uh, but actually if you look at the stats you could argue that Southampton have been the better side today um, so 150 million pounds wasted. Well, I've told the boys I'm not happy with their performance. They look fired up, which is nice, of course. Um, we've got games coming up soon. We'll have to discuss what we're going to do next episode because, of course, there's Champions League stuff to come up now, which is exciting. Very, very exciting. I don't actually know when the draw is either. Um, do we? Do we? Do we? Tea? Do we? Tea tea? Do it? Tea is probably not what it said. We'll work out how to say that. Someone may tell me in the comments section, but I might just nickname him. I mean, the group stage is coming up pretty soon, actually. So, uh, we'll do that group stage game in either West Brom or Tottenham. Um, we may have to do the West Brom game because the, the draw might be like in between the Chelsea and West Brom game. So, we may do that, actually, instead. So, then you can see the draw as well. But next episode, whatever happens, will be this first Champions League group stage match. Okay, so it turned out the Champions League draw was just after the Crystal Palace game. So, I couldn't really not do it. Um, couldn't leave you waiting like that. We played Crystal Palace game. We won 2-1. Um, scoreline doesn't look convincing but stat wise it was convincing and also I think we've wasted £42 million on uh, Sacer on the grounds that Crystal Palace one shot on target so I just think Lincoln goalkeepers in this save are cursed to always concede like every shot on target that's had by the team I don't know I feel like it's a curse because one shot on target one goal it's annoying right the draw then that's the interesting thing we are third seeded so we have potential to be against some very, very decent sides. There's no, it was Arsenal the first seeds. Um, I think I'd like Benfica or CSK Moscow, ideally, in that first seed. Uh, second seed, Dortmund, I know we can beat. Porto, I know we can probably beat. AC. I mean, I wouldn't mind any of those teams, apart from United or Barcelona, really. I, I wouldn't mind the other teams. And then, of course, that we can't have anyone there. And then anyone in that fourth seed is fine with me, I think. So, let's start... Oh, I've accidentally drawn it all. Okay, well, in okay, sorry. Well, into Barca, Lincoln, and Malmo. Uh, in, interesting. Uh, the previous holders of the competition, the, the winners last season, Barcelona, who beat us in pre-season, uh, and then Malmo should be easy. So I feel like third could be on the cards in this group unless we're our absolute best. So, okay, right, fair enough. Well, we start with Malmo next episode which is nice and easy actually i've got to say um who do we want west brom i mean they're, they're sitting in quite similar positions third and fourth uh we'll probably go tottenham on the grounds that they're that they're a better side so we'll do malmo and tottenham 
next episode, I think, probably. So thank you very much for watching today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure you do drop a like on the comments section. What am I talking about? Make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I will see you next time for some more Lincoln Loco action.